Hi, it's Cody here from Tribe Performance, and in your gym machine tutorial today, we're looking at the seated leg curl. Now this is one of the scariest and most complicated looking machines, and I guarantee you, if you learn how to set this machine up, you will have no problems with any other machine in the gym. Just because there are a lot more moving parts, but once you understand how they all work, it really is quite simple. Okay, so we're gonna break this down. So first of all, this machine looks at our hamstrings and our glutes, okay? So the back part of our upper leg. So a really great machine for developing those, but we do have to take care of how we set it up. The first thing to note, if we bring it around here, what we wanna look at is where our seat is positioned. So here behind the seat, we have a little pin-loaded um, adjustment system, and we're gonna pull that pin out, and that allows our seat to move forward and back. So it might take you a little bit to figure out what number you need to put it on for yourself based off your height. So that is a little bit of a trial and error when you first start. Once you've got it though, you'll remember your number and know where to put it to straight away. All right, once that's taken care of, we're gonna move into setting up the rest of the machine. So we wanna sit in, okay? And we're gonna, first of all, place our legs on the top of the pad here, okay? Now looking at where that's situated, the pad has two moving parts, all right? There is first a back button here. As you can see, a little pin loaded. I push the button in and I can adjust the height, okay? Now that is gonna change the swing length that I have to pull my legs underneath, all right? So generally, when it's down like this, that's a shorter motion, okay? As it's up higher, I can get it in there. That is a larger range of motion. So depending on how you want to set it up and your level of intensity you're trying to create is where you'll sit that there. So I'm going to leave that there. And then the next one that we adjust, and you may want to come around this side so you can actually see, is another one of those pin-loaded buttons. And here you can see this moves the pad in and out. All right? And here you've got XL, L, M, and S. So we're going to put that where it needs to be, based off probably your, is your height, okay? If you're reasonably tall, you'll know XL and so on and so on. Um, but what we're looking for is we wanna place that pad just behind, uh, between sort of the meaty part of our calf and the top of our shoe, sort of where that Achilles is. Now, it will be a little bit of comfort preference. So as you can see, if I put that there, that's too far for me. So I'm gonna lower that down and I'm gonna position it there. So if I sort of flex my toes back, you can see the top of my shoe sits there and the meaty part of my calf is kind of starting there um, where that muscle is. That's where we're gonna get the most comfortable probably area to push or pull, actually, we're pulling it under um, to be able to use this. Now the last thing we need to do is set up what I like to call our fighter pilot arms. Because as you see, we've got our little handles on here and we wanna lower this down. So I pull this uh, lever out, the same mechanism that's here on the seat, and we're gonna pop it down. Sometimes this can get stuck, um, purely because the weight of this pulls down, it's hard to pull out. All you've gotta do is a little lift up, take pressure off the pin, and lower it down. Now we wanna really lower this down and squash yourself in. So you kind of feel like it's putting a lot of pressure. Now straight away, I know I haven't set this up correctly, all right? Because where this pad comes down, is very, very close to my knees, okay? And I actually want a little bit more room to sit there so that I can bend. So, I'm gonna adjust and go forward. Another number to bring myself a little bit more forward so that when I sit here and I lower this down, now, there you go. You can see I have a little bit of a gap, okay? here between that pad and my actual kneecap. So that when I bend my knee, there's gonna be that little bit sticking out. That puts less pressure on my knee. That's the key thing for this machine, all right? If you're too far forward and have that pressure coming down on your knee, not very great, all right? So once I'm locked in, got my fighter pilot arms, what's the next thing I need to check? My weight, that's right. So I need to check my weight to make sure that it's on something that I can lift. So we've got our pin loaded machine here where, where our pin goes into one of the holes that's corresponded with a number. Now that's on 25. 
We also have our dial, so I have to check that. That's currently situated on zero, so I'm lifting 25 kilos. If that was turned around to the five, that means I'm lifting 30. So with it's the 7.5, that makes it 32 and a half. If I turn, and then I would go down one to make it 35, all right? But today we're gonna leave this on 25 for me to demonstrate. I'll get back in my seat. Make sure I'm not in my fighter pilot. Now, because I actually moved my seat forward, you'll notice that this has changed. So I should actually extend that a little bit. So when you adjust one thing, you may have to check a couple others to make sure you're in the right position. So now that's in the proper position for my lower body. Get myself locked in. Now a key thing we see with this machine is the position you need to be in while moving, all right? A common mistake here is what people do is they start to move quite a lot here with their upper body and their, their back, and they're coming out of position and thinking they're doing the exercise, but you're not actually isolating the muscles we want to use. So, a common cue that myself, Yong, and the rest of the team give is you want to make sure you're using your fighter pilot hands, pushing your bum and your back into the seat to stay in here, so that when you move, it is only the hamstring and the glutes contracting, not everything else moving all at once, because then I'm not using the muscles we desire to train. When we use a machine, we want to make sure we use it for the right purpose. So here, I'm locked in, strong, boom, I'm squeezing those hamstrings and controlling out. Squeezing and controlling out. If I want to try to pull the machine, in, under as far as I can, under myself, and controlling out. Make sure you control that, don't let it drop out, because one, you're gonna put pressure on your knees, two, the weight's gonna slam, and all lead to a lot of other things that we don't wanna to get to. So, control down, control out, control down, control out, making sure we stay nice and still, all right? As always, when we're getting out of this machine, this is where people struggle, Remember, the pin can be locked. So we want to try to lift just a little bit, pull the pin out, lift up, and go. You'd be surprised how many people I see trying to get out without moving that. So make sure you take it off when you're trying to get out. And that is, as I said, our most complicated machine in the gym. If you can take some time with this and get it right, you'll be comfortable with all the others. We're always here if you've got any questions. Don't be afraid to ask us, but this is our seated leg curl machine.